before I comment on the full homily, I want to reiterate the last phrase that was read to us from the book of Acts, chapter 9. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being built up and walked in fear of the Lord. And with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. We're here today to celebrate the confirmation and reception into the church of Peter Arnold, a new person in our faith after how many thousands of years we're still doing what Jesus asked us to do. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But let's go back to the branches and the vines. Growing up during the summer months, my family would go to Union Beach, New Jersey. Now, my father was, you know, Italian by birth. His father was born in Abruzzi, his, grandma, his mother too as well. And my, father, my mother from Sicily. But the tradition was in their veins, I think. The tradition of eating outside under the vineyard. So my father built this vineyard haphazardly. He was never the best of contractors, but he did build this vineyard in the backyard over a long table that the whole family could eat at every Sunday, of course, you know, because we had neighbors and friends and family from the city and home neighbors. Okay. So he built this vine. And over the years, he wanted it to provide enough shade for all of us who sat in this long table. It had to be 12 feet. So what he did is he didn't take directions from Jesus today. What he did is he never pruned it. It never bore fruit. Sometimes you'd have these little things that look like raisins coming out. And my mother would say, Frank, why don't you take care of it? You know, it looks like garbage. He never, it never bore good fruit. But foliage, tons of it. Because he never pruned it, it didn't produce the root of its, of its soul, of what it's supposed to do. He let it go wild, which is his idea. And, of course, every summer... Rose would say, Frank, when are you going to cut it? I'm not going to cut it. Look what happens. And of course, the whole thing grows in, and it provided enough shade for all of us during the, during the summer months. And even my mother's cat used to go there and then hang out from underneath the vine and, and wave at us while we're eating. He didn't take those instructions from Jesus because he's not following the example of Jesus as given to us today in the scriptures by Jesus himself, You've got to be pruned. We've got to be pruned. It's not easy. But if you're not pruned, talking as a vineyard, if we're not pruned, we grow wild. And Jesus' idea is that we don't grow wild. And I don't have to name how, how we're pruned. All of us are pruned in our own lives, challenges to our faith, challenges as we walk along the, the, the life cycle that we're a part of. And, and challenges come up and we, we, we t are tempted to go away, to run away, like the, the scriptures are mentioning in, in, from John's Gospel. Some people say, oh, I know Jesus enough. I don't, have to, I don't have to be good. I know Jesus. That's enough. I'm saved. I don't have to do good. I don't have to feed the hungry. Well, Jesus said in John's Gospel and John's letter and Jesus said, mm, that's, that's not the whole thing. The whole thing is we've got to experience some of the negativity of life and put it in proper perspective, experience it, and prune it out of our lives to stay focused so we can bear fruit. A few weeks ago, we were called lambs. Today, we're calling grapes. We're neither lambs nor grapes. We're people following the metaphors of Jesus today in the scriptures. And Jesus challenges us. I want you to stay with me. And I want you to bear fruit. Not grapes, not anything else. You know the fruit. We're celebrating the gifts of the Holy Spirit and confirmation. And, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are wonderful. Knowledge, fear of the Lord, faith, encouraging us to love one another. These are the fruits of the vine of Jesus. And he's the vine. The Father's the vine branch. Take, he's the vineyard master, you might say. And each of us has the ability to be grafted into Jesus, and we are grafted at baptism into his body. And each of us is challenged to live that life. And it's not going to be easy. That's the prune stuff. It's not going to be easy. Look at poor Paul. Paul, was, as you know, he was a great 
evangelist, one of the great theologians of the early church. He was converted, as you know, comes back, and they, re they rejected him. The apostles, they rejected him. We don't trust them. He's one of them. He's only in here just to get on a good side, and then he's going to persecute us like he did before. And some of the Hellenists, who were Christians, but Hellenists, Greeks, even tried to kill him. So he was rejected. You're going to be rejected. And now I speak to Peter, all of us, but he's becoming a Catholic. You're going to be rejected. People are not going to be impressed that you're Catholic. People are not going to be impressed that you pray, that you believe in Jesus, that you've gone through the RCAA, that, that you, you've taken on the, what we call the mystagogia of the church, the continuing understanding of what it means to be a Christian. Nobody's going to be impressed with that. We are, because we're your family. We're already part of the vine. But those who are not part of the vine are not going to be impressed with that. And they weren't impressed with Paul's words. They thought he was deceptive. But he had to prove himself after many years returning to Jerusalem and being accepted and being a great evangelist that he was, preacher of God's holy word. We're challenged today in the Holy Scriptures to understand what is my role as a Christian. And we can't say, come in, receive communion, pray and leave and be an animal. That's not our role. Our role is come in, pray, receive the Eucharist, be part, part of the body of Christ, understand his holy word, and go out and bear fruit out there. Charity, love, forgiveness, getting rid of the garbage of our lives, all the lives that we are surrounded with, Get, getting rid of the garbage of prejudice, getting rid of the garbage of, of hate, getting rid of, the, rid of the garbage of inequality. That's what we're obligated to do. Sure, we come to church during the Easter cycle and we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, but he didn't go to the cross just so you and I could come here and be nice in church and feel comfortable in church. He went to the cross with all of its pain in order to teach us something, in order to give us something. And what he gave us is his life that we can share. He gave us his life so we could bear fruit and bring his life as we understand it to others to those in need, to, to, to those who don't even know Jesus, to those who are antagonistic, to those who are agnostic, to those who are scandalized by us at times. We're still obligated and challenged to bear fruit of charity, of love, of patience, of understanding. And you know, it sounds like the, 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 the open up a Chinese cookie, say, okay, these are the old things you're supposed to do. But I'm not reading it from a Chinese cookie. I'm giving it from the Word of God. These are the things we're obligated to do. And our obligation is to, even though the author of Luke, Acts, the Apostles, maybe at times painted a pretty picture in the Acts of the Apostles, but our obligation is, as the root of the church and the foundation of the church was established, is to be at peace. And you know Judea, Galilee, and Samaria today are not at peace. The Christians are being persecuted left and right in what we call the Holy Land and throughout the Middle East. So our church is not at peace. Our hearts and our faith need to be at peace so we can support those who are being persecuted, however. It's our obligation to build up the church and to walk in the fear of the Lord and fear is not, oh, I'm afraid of God. No, fear of the Lord is being awestruck by God. Being so impressed, the fact that, you know, just, I, I often do this, but think of your name and be awe-impressed awe and awestruck by the fact that God loves and fill in the word. I'll say Louis, Anna, Jorge, George, Bill, Maggie, Don, who we're praying for. God cares for every one of us and gives us the nourishment to bear fruit in imitation of his own son, Jesus. That's, what we're, that's how we can build up the church, to be respectful and being so aware that God is in my life that I want to share him. And, uh, you know, I preach. You know I preach. Some of you can also preach. All of us need to preach through our actions. Go back to John's epistle. 
Don't give me, uh, I know Jesus, I don't have to be a Christian. I know Jesus, I can be prejudiced. I know Jesus, I can make racial jokes. I know Jesus, that's all garbage. And later on, he'll call those people liars. You can't love God unless you love your neighbor. And your neighbors aren't only your own clan. Your neighbors are those beyond the borders. Came to church to feel good? You're not going to leave church feeling good unless you've accepted, all of us have accepted, the peace that comes with being pruned as Christians. The peace of knowing God is with us and he wants us to be representatives of his son out in the world. And the greatest gift, that section of Acts closes with, the consolation of the Holy Spirit was with them and they grew in numbers. This past weekend, I had two major funerals, family funerals, and through all of them, a lot of tears, a lot of sadness, the consolation of love was there. The consolation of the Holy Spirit was among all of us. As we consoled, as we laughed, as we told stories about uh, Jean and about Wally. That's what the Christian does. Being consoled by the Holy Spirit, facing reality of being pruned by death and illness and all those other things that come our way, but holding on to the vine, holding on to Jesus, who holds on to the Father. And that's our way. In a few seconds, you're going to experience the Holy Spirit continuing the growth of our church. As I invite Peter up in a few moments to receive the sacrament of confirmation, realize the Holy Spirit is upon him. And the Holy Spirit is upon us as we witness the growth of the church.